The Texas Rangers rely on many tools and skills to bring criminals to justice, from the detailed gathering of evidence to the careful interrogation of suspects. But long before that interrogation takes place, it is often an artist's sketch that has put a face on the criminal and led to an arrest. To get these sketches, Rangers turn to the skills of a talented forensic artist who can interview a witness or a victim to a crime and turn a memory into a piece of evidence. The reason that I'm involved is because we need to be able to see what the witness saw. You know, you hear about evidence like you can pick it up and put it in a bag, something from a crime scene. Well, this kind of evidence is in someone's mind and I need to get that out of your mind and onto a piece of paper, and then that piece of paper becomes evidence that we can use in court and to further the investigation. You could tell that he was maybe a little bit stock stockier in the face area and in the chin area. Okay. He didn't have a prominent or uh, defined chin. Okay, great. They're nervous. Maybe they've seen a little something on TV, CSI or something, but they, they don't know um, what to expect, and usually they feel some pressure. What I'm going to do is just start drawing what you've told me as we continue talking, okay? And okay. I'm going to ask for your input as we go along to, okay. to help me. Um, and there's really no right or wrong, okay? What I'm going to do is just get a basic idea going, and I'm going to show it to you, and you can help me with how to make changes, okay? And at the same time, I have photographic references that they can look at, which are simply pictures of parts of people's faces. It's a whole face, but it, a lot of it's grayed out so that you just focus on each feature at a time. Can you see the differences, how some of it's really, really close to the head, mm -hmm. and others it's a little bit longer, but it's still considered a short hairstyle? Yeah. Okay. So if you can kind of give me an idea of what you saw on this suspect, and I can add that into the drawing. Um, I looked a little bit more like this. This one? They've picked these features, you know, okay, these eyes, this nose, hair like this, ears like this. I'm putting it all together into a new drawing. That's what the word composite means, is separately described individual parts put together into a new whole. So I'm creating this new image with all these little parts. What I do is not about being a great artist. It's not about creating something beautiful. It's about creating evidence. The important thing I always try to get across to the jury is, I don't know what I'm drawing. The witness tells me. I don't know what he looks like. This, he is an unknown. Whereas when you're sitting in court that day, of course they know he's the suspect because he's in the defendant's seat. But back it up a year and a half before when I'm actually sitting with the witness and doing the drawing, we don't know who we're looking for. So I don't know what I'm drawing. They tell me, they direct me how to change the eyes, how to fix the hair. And they're the ones that tell me, okay, stop. It looks pretty good. And when they say stop, I stop. And do you feel ready to take a look at the whole thing? Okay. Just tell me what you think. Wow. Um, that looks like him. You get a, a physical reaction, you know, to like cross their arms and back up. You know, they don't want to be close to it because it looks like that person. Or they might get chills down their arms. A lot of times women will get tears in their eyes because it does look like him and looking like him is is chilling to them, it's scary to them. And I hate that I have to put them through something emotional, but it does tell me that we did good. We did a good job together. Forensic artists not only recreate memories with pencil and paper, they also identify faces using nothing but bone and clay. These sculptures can help the Texas Rangers identify a murder victim who has been discovered buried in a field and the only evidence that remains is the victim's skeleton and skull. Quite literally, the rangers bring me either the entire skeleton or the, the skull and the mandible, which is the lower jawbone, and I work directly on that. Well, the reason we would need a facial reconstruction from a skull is to help identify a person who has died when there isn't another way to identify them, like fingerprints. We're using that to recreate what we believe they looked like in life. It's important that I be given all information from the scene. So um, that is, how was this body discovered, or the skeleton? Where? What were the circumstances? You know, how long do we think it had been in the field? What was found with the body? 
It's a powerful thing. And because it's life size, because it is them, and it's on a stand, it's right in front of me, you are literally face to face with it. You have your hands on their face. It's almost like they want you to solve this case. You know what I mean? This is my way to help you. You can't speak for yourself any longer. The artwork produces results. This 17-year-old boy was murdered and buried in a field. His bones discovered a year later. A facial reconstruction was created and photos were shown on TV. The victim's father recognized the image immediately, which led to the arrest and imprisonment of six people. There's somebody's family, there are homicide victims, there's, there are unanswered questions out there. And I always feel such relief for the victim because I could, I'll go right back to that case in my mind and I'll remember what they went through and how hard it was. And I think, you know, that's justice for them. It's, it's wonderful. It's amazing.